Hello and welcome to this Track and Knife Game Asset Tutorial Series with me, Joe Harford. Today we're going to go through part 1, covering the high poly modelling of the blade. As always, any questions please leave a comment, check out my website to see more completed work and more tutorials, and I'd like to see you back in part 2. Thanks. So let's begin. I'm going to load in a background image into the viewport, and I'm going to make a plane make it the same size as my background image. Now I'm not looking for millimeter accuracy here, so I'm just applying the background image onto that plane. And now I have a background image which I can use for modeling reference, which I can just put aside, freeze, and turn off show frozen in gray, so I can model over it uh, without accidentally selecting it. I've put a box in the scene, I'm just deleting half and adding a symmetry modifier so we can start working on just the left hand side of the, uh, the object. We're going to start with the handle. So here I'm just adding swift loops in uh, which I've customized to the S key and then just tweaking the verts, uh, making sure to select the middle and the front vert uh, with a rectangular selection and, and just uh, adjusting it to the rough shape of this handle. I'm not going into detail with the small indentations at the top at the moment. I'm just going for the rough shape uh, for, for a proportion reference. Now I'm going to do the same with the front of the knife. Just uh, I've copied that across, modified the start of the handle, and just deleted a bunch of it that, that we didn't need. Uh, I've also deleted the middle edge loop, which is just not necessary at this point. So here I'm still matching up the proportions, extruding outwards, and just trying to match the overall shape of the blade. And whenever I need, I add a swift loop in, or I extrude the front faces. And I look through a few of the references to try and get the uh, impression of the front of the blade. I've got that on another monitor now, so I can uh, see how thick uh, different parts of it are. I've put a transparent shader on instead of using the see-through mode because it gives you a little bit more control and it uh, just lets you see through your object with a, a bit more clarity and you can adjust the transparency adding in more swift loops matching up the lower portion of the blade Now I've got a pretty good proportion now for the, the knife. So I'm going to start working on the blade and moving the bottom points inwards to form that edge of the blade. And now I'm going to match up with the, the cutting edge so it gets sharpened and again move the uh, bottom edge loop inwards to make that really nice sharp bladed edge. Now of course I don't want to go too sharp because this is going to be a game model. I'm using the by angle selection to select that whole front face there. And I, I've used the make planar function to flatten it as well. Just to make sure, just in case I accidentally moved any of the verts outwards in the x axis, uh, the make planar just makes sure that that is completely flat. Now I'm using the cut tool, the standard max cut tool, to shape these uh, serrations. a bit more accuracy into the way they're shaped. Uh, I'm also thinking about how I want my topology to flow. So I've got two points that meet the sides of the serrations and I've got three points which form the bottom of them because I know how I want that topology to flow. So I'm setting that up. Do the same thing on the right hand side. I'm just flattening everything off. Uh, I'm, now I'm adding uh, an edge loop in, which will, when smoothed, give a nice curvature to, to the blade and harden that edge around our front section. Now 
Now, with a knife like this, you I don't want to have hundreds of edges, edge loops, running along the side of the underside of my blade, because it's too many to control, and I'll end up with a bumpy edge of my blade, and that's not what we want at all. So I need a way of terminating the edge loops from these serrations at the top of the blade. And part of that, it, part of the process of modeling a high poly object is thinking how you, you will terminate your edge loops, how your topology will flow to give you the smoothest uh, surface, surface possible while maintaining the accuracy of the model. Forming this indented section which is quite a complicated area. This is where if you had the knife in front of you it would be a lot easier to see what was going on rather than working it out from pictures. Uh, it doesn't help that the, the knife is black or, or reflective because it makes the surface very hard to work out what's going on. That's part of the main job for us as, uh, as artists modeling weapons and knives, things, things like this, is, is working out what the surfaces are actually doing in the reference. And on that note, the more reference that you have, the more accurately you can do that task, and the more accurate your model will be, and the more pleased your, your employer or whoever's going to be looking at your images will be. Just tidying up a few things. I've noticed that the, the way that the uh, cutting edge of the blade uh, forms this indented section, it, it actually loops around. So I'm going to put that into the model as well. I'm going to put this loop. And whenever there's a surface that t turns into uh, another surface, uh, like if you if you have a hole in a curved surface or a hole that's next to a surface that turns 90 degrees, I'll always add an extra edge loop around the edge of the hole. Uh, I call it pro uh, protection, uh, smoothing protection, because otherwise you'll get uh, strange pinches around the edges of your hole. So every now and again I'm checking with show end result and um, my turbo smooth on top of my modifier stack and I'm checking how the model looks when smooth. And you can in the customized user interface you can set show end result to a hotkey. I've got mine uh, to shift Q, which is where my hand rests on the WASD, WER keys. It's very handy and I use it a lot. I'm adding more edge loops here, connecting things up and cleaning the model as I go. And I'm about to start working on topology for these serrations that will terminate them and give a really accurate result uh, because they need quite a lot of geometry. I've got my T key bound to the Polydraw Optimize, which is a really neat tool, not just for optimizing and retopologizing, but it has a collapse, target weld, and a constrain all within one tool. So if I shift drag from one vert to another vert, that'll weld it. If I click on one edge, that'll collapse it. You can also remove edges and edge loops and weld uh, edges to other edges, all without leaving uh, 
one tool. It's also a lot less finicky than using target world. Because target world, you you can end up play, uh, fiddling about trying to select one vert and then select the other vert, whereas uh, Polydraw Optimize, all you need to do is just uh, drag from one to the other. Now I'm going to work on the smoothing for these serrated sections. Before I added these edge loops in, the bottoms were uh, over smoothing and there wasn't enough geometry in there to control uh, how tight the, the bottom section is, is smoothing. So I've added that edge loop in and now everything's running a little bit more, uh, a bit more accurate. I'm constantly checking how it looks like smoothed, so it's, uh, it's very important to do that. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, it looks very tight. The, the edge loops are all very clean and I'm not getting any pinching on my model or anything looking out of place. So I've still got a little bit of work to do on the back, back of the blade. And I'm going to make sure that it runs inside the handle enough and it doesn't stick out. I have noticed that the, the blade's a little thin. So I'm going to uh, adjust that, I'm going to pull it out a little bit. So I'm just selecting the part of the blade now that uh, needs to be pulled out. And I found an image of the tops of these serrated sections, and they're almost square. So that, that gives me a good reference for how far to pull it out. Check in with symmetry mode on and uh, show end result on again. And now I'm adding more control edge loops. Which, when you run them uh, along, so if you built your model in a way where, uh, which is very clean, and you have edge loops running around uh, your object, you can easily add and remove those edge loops to control how tight and sharp your highlights are, or how sharp your your edges are. Because of course, uh, we could we could have modeled this entire uh, object without any smoothing, but in reality it wouldn't look realistic because even at the sharpest object there's still a small bevel on the end of that sharp edge. So let's go on and finish these uh, indented edges on the back of the knife. Now we have to make sure that these match the handle as well because the handle also has these indentations and they run alongside the knife blade uh, exactly the same. So we'll obviously duplicate this uh, end of the blade and use that in our knife to make sure that the topology is the same and the, the smoothing is the same. In cases like this it, it takes a little bit of trial and error to work out the correct type of topology that you'll build. It's, it's a little tricky but you'll sort of work it out based off other sections of your model. So the bottom here it has uh, two, two edge loops defining the curve, but when I start to add the chamfers uh, on top of these little um, indentations, I'll suddenly I'll need more geometry down the bottom to, to support it, otherwise there's just too many loops to terminate with, uh, with no, uh, nowhere to ter terminate them. So I'm recreating the handle now with a bit more uh, accuracy. Moving everything, yeah, moving everything into place, just following the reference and using Swift Loop. Uh, so in some cases I won't be using Swift Loop, I'll be using a Flow Connect, which is an alternative to Swift Loop, except that it maintains the curvature of your geometry, which is great if you're working on a character and you add an edge loop around the eye, it's a lot easier to use Flow Connect and have it maintain the curvature of that eye rather than having to go in there and manually adjust the polys afterwards. I'm modeling the inside of the back of the blade
we have a little bit more leeway with how to terminate edges because they're going to terminate inside of the handle so we'll never actually see the see those parts now I'm running an edge loop along these middle of these rivets and screws because they will also have to have a hole in them because the hole goes through the blade and the handle. I'm just making sure I've got that detail there uh, when I need it. Now we're almost coming up to the end of part one which is uh, the part one of the modeling of the high poly. Part 2 is going to cover finishing off the high poly and modeling the screws and the rest of the handle before we go on to creating our low poly, the texturing, baking, and getting it into the bomb set. Yeah, I'm working out the topology for the tips of these, making sure that they smooth well and accurately, and I don't have to run hundreds of edges down into the bottom of my blade, uh, affecting the curvature. Sorry for some of the video problems. I'm not sure what's going on with the capture, but it doesn't seem to be happening in any of the later videos. It's just this one. As I said, I, I left this part in where I took away all the topology I just created, because while I was working on it, I had this idea for a better topology which would be cleaner, more efficient, and give better smoothing. So I wanted to leave that section in there to, to show you that it's okay to uh, just scrap an idea, or scrap an idea of topology, or redo an entire section of your model because you found a better, more efficient way of, of modeling it. I'm just finalizing the topology in these new sections. I deleted and recreated, adding a couple more loops to support loops down the bottom and connecting those up. And I think that's uh, almost done. We just need uh, another loop support loop near the top to stop it just over smoothing. Uh, I think that's looking pretty good, smoothing quite nicely. Just needs that extra support loop to stop the, the edge from pinching. So here we have the completed blade. Let's have a final look with smoothing. Um, I noticed a little bit of an inconsistency in the middle section, which I can fix pretty easily using angle selection. Select that full side. Have a little look around the object to see which axis we need to flatten it in. And then we'll go and hit the Z axis to to flatten it and that'll give us a really nice smoothing. That'll look great in the game. And we've got a really accurate looking knife blade model. Now in part two we'll model the handle and the uh, screws and we'll have finished our high poly model and be ready to move on to the uh, the low poly and the textures and the baking. <laughs>